I'm B, And I'm Sam. And we're two best friends who like to talk shit about smut, wingspan, and sometimes books. Join us every week for a new episode. and followers yeah, which well, is amazing i haven't had a little luck since this morning shall i have a little peek not that like social media matters but you know it's nice to have engagement it is um because we hit the big 1k mark last week didn't we yes. while we were here or just mm-hmm. before i arrived we are now at two shy of 1400 amazing which is i know we said this last week but fucking bonkers i know What's even more fucking bonkers is we have a video in front of us today. So for anyone listening, it means nothing. <laughs> but for the purposes of content, we forced ourselves to actually shower, wash our hair, and um, get dressed on a Sunday and record ourselves yeah. on the camera. I'm just looking um, because we had some new listeners as well, didn't I? I'm obviously obsessed with looking at who's yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we had new listeners in the Czech Republic, which is amazing. Wow. We had three listeners in Austria, which just feels mental. And somebody in Australia. Wow. So we are like... We're going across yeah. the Pacific Ocean? Mm. Is it We're, the Pacific? I, 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 oh, <laughs> geography is not my strong point. M- not mine either. Um, I still put the sat-nav on to drive to your house every time I come here. <laughs> How long have I been living down here? Like, what, 10 years? How long have I been coming to your house yeah, exactly. for? <laughs> Seven years. Um... But yeah, I mean, it's like a little global outreach now, which is amazing. It is. So thank it you is. everyone yeah. for following along and listening to us. Yeah, so today we're doing all SJM women yeah. rated from bottom to top. Well, not all. Sorry, not mm. all, no. We, Our all. Yeah, we picked five from each series mm. because I think when we did the men, it was a bit chaotic. Yeah. It, there was no rhyme or reason to who we picked. No, none. So we've gone for five from each book series yeah i think um we thought the 17 last time wouldn't take us very long and our episode ended up being what 10 minutes less than the previous yeah, one so we are really trying to get to stick to the one hour mark so we're doing 15 today um like you said five from every series yes. Please don't be offended or upset if we didn't pick somebody that you love, but it was really hard to finalise that list yeah. um, and to make it even across the whole series. Because I feel like, and maybe this is me, be- me being a bit of a thing, but when we did it for the men, you know, because like, we really love Akatar. <laughs> like, if we had to pick a fave, yeah. we really love mm-hmm. Akatar. A lot of our big hitters were all the Akatar yeah. men. So I feel like this evens the playing field out a little bit for the other series. Because we still love them, yeah. but maybe just the not at all. Yeah. Um, and then later today, which in terms of recording means nothing. Yeah. But we're doing our first ever book review. Yeah. So episode four, do you want to tell, say what we're doing for our first ever book? Our first book review is going to be Fourth Wing yeah. by Rebecca Yaros. Because we really wanted to still bring you Smut and Wingspan, and we felt like that ticked both boxes. Yeah. Unfortunately, spoiler alert, no men with Wingspan, <laughs> but... Big, big old dragon. Big old dragon Wingspan. <laughs> but yeah, so today, all 15 that we've chosen, yeah. SJM women. Yes. From bottom to top. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. Cool. Should we just go? Yeah. Let's go. Give me a little notepad up. Right. Ooh, look at my look at all my notes for fourth wing that I took. <laughs> I sat down like right, right, ready to write this notes from the podcast. <laughs> look at that two personality types for it. Oh, you can't even see it. But literally nothing on mine. Thank you, like pages of comments. <laughs> but to be fair, it was the first time I ever read it. It was your Yeah, second I've done second too. reads. Yeah, so. so and I did actually do research, it's just all in my yeah. little notepad up here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, number 15. Number 15. Do you want to go first? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> My number 15 is Elaine. Oh, that's okay. I'm I, fine with it. I've got nothing to say about Elaine. She's fine. Yeah. If not a bit morphy. And like, yeah. Okay, fine, gardening's your thing, whatever. But like, 
I don't know. Like, I sit here with like big, big pink flowers yeah, I mean, in front of me. my Lego me. flowers, yeah. like fuck your garden in the lane. <laughs> no, but I just feel like she's so pointless. And then like she becomes the seer and like mm-hmm. oh, but doesn't okay. really use yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's still pining over that human back in like the human race. Yeah. Yeah. Who's a knob. He was a knob. He was so horrible to it. And she's yeah. like pining after him and she's like, Oh, I don't know. I just think she's really ungrateful. <laughs> yeah, I think so she's not particularly high on my list, but a little bit higher. Okay. Um I think with Elaine, like I agree with everything that you're saying. I think her mopiness I think if we had a bit more context, so like if yeah. the fan theories about Elaine are true, um, that like, because I think we have an insight into Elaine's mental process with, so like for example, Nesta's like, well not mopiness, but like Nesta's trauma post cauldron mm-hmm. was very well explained. How yeah. she says like she can't get into a bath, like she talked about literally washing herself in the sink. Um, and then I know it's not through the cauldron, but like she can't listen to a crackling fire because she hears her dad dying. Like, so because I think we've had that context, we've got more to like go with. It is hard with Elaine right now because we just don't have that. Yeah. I think that maybe once we get our Elaine book, she'll probably rate very differently. Well, this is it, isn't it? We're, we're doing this now, having yes. 16 books. Yes. Yeah. 16. So like if we revisited this in a few books time, you know, our... our perceptions and even the males might be different as well yeah because even if we did this imagine if we were doing this pre-reading silver flames yeah who would be our number 15 fucking Nessa. Nessa. i hated, hated it, it. Yeah, i hated, hated it, it. Yeah. i absolutely hated it yeah. so yeah like i hope elaine gets a redemption i really yes. do and like i hope she finds happiness but for me at the moment she's just a bit of a nothing character yeah she's just the third sister yeah i agree and and i but for me i want to get on board with her yeah like, i'm excited for it mm-hmm. i just Right now, I agree with you. What do you go off? Yeah. Not much. And, like, we like our smut. Like, she's not giving me smut vibes. So, like... But I'm... <laughs> I'm we're not... We're not Gwyn real shippers. No. I we just said those words for, like, I'm 12. <laughs> we're not Gwyn real shippers. However, if that is a thing, which it probably will be, yeah. which is fine. I'm not against it. I love the idea of, like, Asriel being an absolute freak and yeah. she's not. I'm so on board for yeah. it. Like, I... Like, sign me up, Sarah. Get me 10 <laughs> copies because I'll fucking buy them. Because, and I love the, like, comparisons to um a lot of, like, the Hades and Perse- Persephone yeah. kind of trope. Like, I love that. Like, obviously, I love the, um what's it called? The Touch of Chaos? Yeah. No, the Touch of Darkness yeah. is the first book. Like, the Hades and Persephone Scarlet St. Clair series. I love that. So, like, I love that they kind of mimic that sort of, you know, like, Hades and Persephone yeah. thing. So I'm, I kind of like, and if, if Sarah's going in the direction we think she is, I can understand why Elaine is the way she yeah. is. But um, I, I do understand where you yeah. come from. My number 15 is Juniper. Okay. Because, like, we put them in here. So, like, spoiler alert, Juniper, Fury, and Danica are all in our five out of Crescent City world. Yes. And, like, it's just with Juniper, I think even more so than Fury that when again these are characters that don't have a lot of screen time so it's hard to give them high scores yeah. we said this last time but with juniper i think i was and with fury shot spoiler alert fury's not much higher on my list um i was really disappointed with them as friends i was very disappointed with juniper when bryce gets into the ballet yeah and then like she kicks off and i get like the i you know you don't want to get someone on somebody yeah. else's yeah, merits yeah, yeah, yeah. but also like can you not just be a bit grateful like yeah i agree and i think as well like obviously i think these two characters fall unfortunately to the kind of like mercy of i think sarah had plans for them and then didn't fulfill those plans in house of flame and shadow because up until sky and breath we were holding our holding our breath to to believe that like we were going to get more yeah and like find out what fury is and like you know get like a maybe more insight into that relationship between yeah. Fury and Juniper and have but... this really big like Juniper Bryce reunion because obviously before she goes off to um the first time to go like fight the asteroid yeah. well not really she leaves her a voicemail doesn't yeah. she and says like I'm really sorry for everything and tucks the little picture in the back of it but you know it, like, yeah. really sweet and lovely um but then we never really got we never got that like kind of healing no. like I'm sorry yeah um but I think that because in the first book and I'm pretty certain it's in the first it's in House of Earth and Blood where it's mentioned that like Juniper like trigger warning for anything serious now but like Juniper stops Bryce at one point literally trying to you kill, know, herself. kill herself yeah. and I when I say oh I love that I don't mean that in a like yeah. but 
it was a really like harrowing thing to read yeah. and it was really um it gave her character like so much like depth i think yeah. and it was really interesting that, that dynamic between juniper and bryce because bryce is really struggling and she was the closest with danica however like juniper and fury kind of have this like new romance going yeah. on which is really exciting for them and like obviously they're not in the same place bryce is post danica's death so i actually really like liked that for their character yeah. it was lovely and then you kind of have this really difficult sort of period in sky and breath where they're not really talking it's all a bit distant and yeah. she's kind of off with fury and I was a little sort of disappointed in her character that she yeah. didn't, I don't know, didn't do more for, for Bryce, I guess. No, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So not like, don't dislike her. Yeah. But just, and obviously the House of Earth and, uh, House of Flame and Shadow reunion was shit. Yeah. Awful. Awful. Yeah. Number 14. My number 14 is Juniper. Okay. Um, for all the reasons we've just discussed. Yeah, yeah. I think like, the only thing I like about Juniper is when they're in the club and like she yeah. loves to dance so yeah, like like really oh cute. like you're like clubbing girls yeah. like her and bryce in the club together yeah. i quite like that yeah but other than that yeah for all the reasons you've just said she's yeah. very low on my just list like, yeah but like you said like they don't get a lot of screen time so we don't have a lot to base no, 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 it no. off like, we can only go off what's in the books and obviously we've got a lot less books in the crescent city mm-hmm. series than the other series so mm-hmm. yeah she's just low on my list yeah no i agree my number 14 is fury yeah Again, like for much of the same reasons I've just said for Juniper, um, little bit of like a maybe the reason why she gets a little bit of a one up is she didn't have as close of a relationship maybe with Bryce, so mm. maybe doesn't feel as like as responsible, yeah. you know, for kind of the crappy mm-hmm. behavior. And I just think like Fury from the get go is sort of described as being one of the kind of the friendship group, but was always a little bit like out out of it because yeah. she's got this really interesting mm-hmm. job that we never find out what the fuck that is i quite like the mystery around fury yeah. yeah and i'm like i want more like i mm. i like and like the people who say that she's the mercenary in the beginning mm. of akatar um mm. that helps fira in, in the market yeah. like uh, i don't know i just I w- i'd love to know more about her background i didn't dislike that there was mystery i just don't like that we technically come to the end of well to kind of come to the end of the series and what do we know but look maybe this higher powers i.e sarah j mass that has like a plan yeah maybe something up her sleeve like a a spin-off of like Fury. maybe in like the yeah. fourth crescent city book it may be in actor yeah. who knows yeah, like, yeah. i really hope but it, you know if we were to come to the end of like all these three you well two universes because we pretty much know that tog's yeah. done if we were to come to the end of both of them and we were still in the same situation, I would be a bit gutted. Oh, yeah, like, no, I agree. There was a lot of mystery yeah, built up around no, her. I agree. Um, 12. 13. 13. <laughs> I'm doing it already. No wonder we got so <laughs> off track last time. And I numbered them this time so I wouldn't get confused. Um, my 13 is February. Okay. Like, much of what we've just said. Yeah. Like, I quite like the reason she's a little bit higher on my list is like that mystery is yeah. sort of like she's got me like yeah. Sarah's got me waiting yeah um and I'm intrigued by her oh the other thing I was going to say about Fury this is such a pathetic reason but I really resonate is she drinks my coffee drink <laughs> so in is this guy in breath here and Bryce go for coffee yeah. and she drinks a dirty chai and she asks for extra dirty and I <laughs> resonate with that kind of girl so that was the only other reason I put for that um, for Fury being a little bit higher mm. um. 13 yeah my 13 is danica okay again like we don't have much to go off yeah. much of what we know about danica is like not from the horse's mouth it's for yeah. other people um but i do really love the friendship that here and bryce evidently had i think it's lovely i was gutted when spoiler alert danica died mm-hmm. because the, i think what sarah achieves in like what like a couple of chapters like three chapters of bryce and danica's relationship is just like amazing and i think it's the type of relationship that a lot of like girls our age can resonate with mm-hmm. it's such a like it's such a girls girls relationship yeah. does that make sense like i love their dynamic i love they're both both a bit messy in their own ways you yeah. know like they share an apartment they're like just out of college they're not they're doing with life i just i yeah. love that um and I know, like, it's a really popular thing on the internet to, like, take the piss out of all the things Danica was doing behind Bryce's yeah, back. Yeah, lying about everything. Yeah, but I do really think she did it because that's how much she loved yeah. Bryce. And ultimately, she was just trying to protect her. That's all she ever wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Danica. So, my number 12 is Danica. Okay, so close. Um, yeah. 
like yeah for all the reasons you've said like i do think like at her core she cared about bryce so much yeah but maybe just went about the about it the wrong way yeah. like trying to protect her but like not looping her in mm-hmm. maybe wasn't the right decision but she did what she thought was best and then like her coming for bryce's drop and, and being there yeah. like yeah i love it and like yeah. the light it up like yeah stunning. yeah love i just I, and i do i really like their friendship and yeah. you know like all the, like the fan art that's like the, the back of them yeah, and she's got a jacket, jacket. Oh, yeah i just I love it i just love all that fan I know. Art. me so, too i love it yeah so she was my number it. 12 okay so my number 12 is amran okay i so i kind of felt this after my first first ever time reading Akatar series mm. and then having just done a reread kind of or maybe two books um there's a lot of good things about amran and i had a lot of like highlighted quotes of amran um one of my favorite scenes being when um valaris gets attacked um when favor is on the bridge with cassian and she summons the water walls there's like a really lovely little quote about like um once the other opposite side of the river was being held down but it wasn't by the two illyrians it was amran who just had an arm extended in front of him was just killing people like i love yeah. how like god level badass she is in this like tiny little well literally tiny ancient one yeah. they call it. i love that but she's a bit of a bitch i would go as far as to say she's a bit of a cunt to be honest <laughs> C-bomb of the podcast we did say it i think it was in the last episode but i cut it out oh, okay. not on not on purpose <laughs> not because i cared about the c-bomb but because it, the, the whatever it was just like didn't matter yeah. but honestly she's she's a bit of that i get that she's grumpy and I, i'm not saying all the time some of yeah. her like na- not nastiness but like what's the word i guess like um i don't know what the word would be to describe it kind of sharpness mm. i don't know I do understand, like, that's her character. Like, yeah. she's very, like, to the point, blunt. Mm-hmm. Like, and I like that about her. But there's some occasions where I really think she 100% saps over the line. The absolute... The reason why she's so low on my list, mainly, is because she... Like, why the fuck does Nesta kneel before her to say she's sorry? No. I don't care what fucking level of death god you are. Like, don't make... I know she doesn't make her, but it's the fact she doesn't go, like, oh, get, get like, up. No, no, like, stop it. Yeah, like, I don't... I don't like it. Like, I just feel like sometimes she just gives me a little bit of, like, bad vibes. Yeah. Like, I, I just really, like, rub up the wrong way with her at times. And yeah. there's a scene again, I think in Akamath, don't think it's Akawal, with her in her loft while she's trying to decipher the book at some point. Maybe it's Akawal, I can't remember. And then she, like, starts saying really shitty things to Feyre. And there's actually like, a bit of confrontation scene when they're all there. I don't know if you remember. And then, like, Moore's like, don't fucking speak to her like that. And and then Feyre's like, it's fine. And It's not fine. It's not fine. <laughs> like, she's she can just be a real asshole yeah. at times. That's why she's so low on my list. Okay. Sorry, Amran. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, God. My number 11 is Amran. Oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah for, for all the reasons you've just said i just yeah. think like she's just a bit of like a grumpy old man yeah and like i the thing i do like about amran i love that she loves like rubies and jewels yeah and, i like, love that the, yeah, the yeah. reese just like yeah. buys her like yeah. fucking diamonds yeah. all the time and like it just reminds me of like Gollum with a ring yes like i can yeah, just yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. it with all like yeah. her rubies but i also love that like you know when fear is too scared to go into the prison and she gives that that her that like necklace and says you can't be kept underground then she gives it back and she's like oh i just lied <laughs> just to get you into I, I, there's so much good about amran and that's why i really struggled with putting her so low yeah but she can just be a royal fucking bitch when yeah, she wants to be. She can. Yeah, and I I I liked Amran when Reese comes back. So Faye has gone back to Spring Court. Okay. And he says, like, my wife, my spy, my high lady. And yeah. as soon as Amran knows that she's high lady, she's like, yeah. You have to go and get her now. Yeah. Like she doesn't give a shit. Like like the hierarchy means something yeah. to her. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. she understands like the, the levels sort of mm-hmm. thing. And she's mm-hmm. like, No, you have to go and get her now. Mm-hmm. Like she doesn't like it that she's back in Spring Court. And yeah. I, I I like I like her for that. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, there's just not enough good like for her to be in. And like what happens in Akka Wall? Like she gets into the cauldron or like she tries to like She yeah, so the, uh, Reese the, discovers that or they discover that there's like a unbinding spell to like free Amran. Mm. 
And then I can't remember the actual like technicalities, but basically to stop the cauldron from taking everything. Oh no, is it because like he frees her and then she's like no longer in a mortal body, so she just kind of like yeah, it's just I weird, isn't it? Yeah, I don't remember the technicalities around yeah. it. Um, but then she decides to come back and mm. binds herself to a fey form mm-hmm. or the same fey form but she isn't like a death god anymore yeah i don't know yeah um yeah like again i like her but and there's a lot of really like lovely amran moments um but she can be a bit of a see you next tuesday yeah agree boy that that was your number 11 wasn't it yeah my number 11 is elaine okay so it, like much of what we've already said yeah. that like i don't dislike her and i think that once we get a lane book we'd be singing a different yeah, song yeah. just as of right now yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say I necessarily feel, I don't know if I think she's mopey, because she does get a bit better towards like the end of Akawar when she starts to kind of, I just don't love how, because I understand that not every female character has to be physically, like, I'm going to be a badass and kill yeah. everyone. I like that sometimes they may be like a softer or feminine person, but I don't feel like Elaine has any like, she's not cunning yeah. you know there's no there's no like give or take with her like she's not a fighter fight and they don't always have to be but like what is it with elaine because yeah, not book smart either no like, like up until now like i i really don't know like she uses her seer abilities once and then like she just ends up getting kidnapped by highburn you know? <laughs> <laughs> so again I, but but again like might be singing a different song yeah in a couple of months years okay my number 10 is Irene. Oh, no, I'm not going to shout at oh, you. Okay. She's a bit higher on mine, but yeah. that, no, that's okay. Okay, <laughs> cool. I like Irene. Like, obviously, we meet her in Assassin's Blade, mm-hmm. and I love that whole interaction between yeah. her and Selena, and, like, Selena giving her all her money to get mm-hmm. out, and, like, Irene saying, like, I'm going to make it as a healer. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, obviously revisiting it in Tower of Dawn, and mm-hmm. she has done that. She's in the healers yeah, thing. Yeah, all. Yeah. Um, like, and I love her relationship with Kale. I yes. love love their love yes. like but again if we're going on screen time like we see her in two books or, or three books i suppose because yeah. she does end up taking down um the valg but, yeah but yeah i just yeah i think irene for me i really sh- i don't mind a pregnancy mm-hmm. like i'm not mad about favors so yeah. people get really angry about fairies it didn't bother me at all i saw it come in mm. i didn't even like to even didn't even mind irene's i just thought it was i don't know it was like a bit i just think she could have been more badass in those final scenes because ultimately we said this before when we were doing the, the 16 books that like tog or like they wouldn't have saved the world if it wasn't for irene yeah like aileen could have done everything she could have tried but if it wasn't for irene yeah well aileen like burnt out there was nothing left yeah aileen couldn't kill a valg mm-hmm. ultimately like the person who could cleanse somebody of a val like the, the whatever yeah. the word stone is is irene yeah so i think that like she falls a little bit victim to not having the sort of like heroes arc i guess in the yeah. fighting kingdom of ashton she should have everything else but irene i really love i love her in tower of dawn yeah. i love that she like kind of had this romance with not so obviously not sartak but the other one i can't think of his name now yeah, yeah one, of, one of, them. of them one of the brothers and then it's all a bit like oh we got too serious for me and then uh, i love yeah. how much she loves kaol yeah i feel like a and lot... i love how much she hates him in the beginning it's great isn't it? <laughs> I love it. I love how um I think we mentioned this in the first in our first episode, but when she actually finds him hot, I feel like Irene's internal monologue about how hot she finds Kale is what ours would yeah. be. Like at one point, she says something like, "Oh, she shamelessly like licked his neck," and it's like honestly saying yeah. because I would yeah. do. Um, so there's a lot to love about Irene, but I do agree with you that like there's not much to go off, yeah. and I don't love that she gets pregnant not even that she got pregnant i i, I don't mind that it's just when it happened yeah. like, like it there's was, a lot going on right now did you have to get, get pregnant yeah could it couldn't it just have been at, after yeah. the final battle you know yeah or like maybe she could have been pregnant the whole time but she doesn't find out till like after, yeah. you know i don't know maybe that's just my thing that was number 10 wasn't it yes it was my number 10 is nesrin okay Again, like, love Nesrin. I don't really have anything bad to say at all about her. It's not that there's things that I dislike. Again, it's just not much screen time. What we do have of her, I really like. I'm sure, right, that I should have I should have quoted it. But I'm sure, maybe we mentioned it in the 
in when we did the first the first episode, I can't remember. But there's one point where before she's kind of getting it on with Sartak, she's still kind of like technically with Kale, but were they ever really together? Yeah. Not really. It was all really weird. And um Sartak says something like about her and Kale, like, will you be busy all night? And she's sort of like, with Kale, no. As in, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's really funny. Like, she's like, with him, no. Like, it's just really funny. I really like that quote. Um, yeah, nothing not to like about her. I love that she's like this badass, like, marksman, needs sorrow, love it all, yeah. but just a bit, you know, like, yeah. not enough screen time yeah. to say more, I guess. Number nine. My number nine is Nesrin. Okay. We're literally like... Neck and neck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and like for all the reasons you've said, like she just says, we don't get enough of her to no. be, but like what we do get, I think is absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, her relationship with Sartak is... Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, and her becoming empress. I know we talked about it last time, we but talk, yeah, oh, but it's just the I just best. love it. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I love that. Like, like you said, she's from like this like little like working class family, and yeah. then she ends up like empress. Like, yeah, we love it. Yeah, I'm here yeah, for it. We love it. But yeah, not much more to no, say than what you've already really said. It, it, and like ultimately, it does come down to screen time, doesn't it? Yeah, like, it does. Unfortunately, yeah, but, it does. Yeah. Um, my number nine is more. Okay. So again, there's so much that I love about Morrigan, so much that I love about her, but there are a couple of really shitty, consistent behaviours that really rub me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So I love her and Feyre's friendship. I love that she's Reese's cousin. I love that she kind of like is the polar opposite to Reese. Like he's darkness and she's literally light. I love that. I love that she like not rubs him up the wrong way you know when he's being all bruising and grumpy yeah. she's just like fun I, lo- I just love so much about her I, when I say I love the her heiress backstory I also don't love what happened to her but I love that like plot development for yeah. her character development there's so many good things about Morgan what really really rubs me up the wrong way with her I'm trying not to slam my hand and bang the table is how shit she treats Nesta yeah as much as she says her interests are with women, which we, we love, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I think, again, not trying to make assumptions about characters, but I think more is probably bisexual, not lesbian. Yeah. She does still actively enjoy sleeping with men, yeah. like she does with Harley on, you know. Mm-hmm. And I know that maybe, in reality, her reason for being so thing with Nesta is because, like, Nesta... I don't know if she's shitty towards Katian. I don't think she ever is that bad, but maybe that's just me. Yeah. And I know, like, the backstory is that her and Elaine were really shit towards Feyre, and obviously their, like, loyalties lie yeah. with Feyre. But I just think Moors are necessarily nasty. And, like, I'm sure, again, having just reread Ackerwall, there's a scene where, like, she comes up and she's like, where's Cassie and where's Cassie? And after they fight Hybrid, and Esther's worrying, because she's yeah. like, where is he? Is he okay? Like, has he been hurt? Because also, she's fucking in love with him. Yeah. And then she's like don't you like say anything to him like no no leave him alone it's like no they're fucking mates more again yeah, like calm down know. more <laughs> there's at times where more isn't a girl's girl yes i think that's I what i don't like about her but also like she spent like how many hundred of years with three Ali- 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 and Ali- 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 yeah so, like, like, yeah no i agree like maybe it's hard for her to be a girl's girl because yeah. she's never had girls mm-hmm. around to be a girl's girl with no, I agree. But there's just when I again when I was like we doing this and thinking about like Aquawar specifically, there's just a few instances where I'm a bit like mm, mm, Yeah. I don't love that about you. Mm-hmm. You know? Number eight. No wonder we got so off. Track. I know. That's you win numbers. I can't call it. Post. Um my number eight is Lysandra. Okay. So I love Lysandra. I love slow burn with Adion. Yes. I love the will they won't they with Adion. I love yeah. that she ends up with Adion. Yeah. Just love it. Yeah. And I love how um like self sacrificing she is. Yes. Like when she's the what what does she say? Sea, like, sea dragon. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, there's a high possibility she's gonna die and yeah. she just like flies into yeah. battle. Like she doesn't care. Yeah. Like I love that about her. I yeah. love that that she Yeah. I I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It was just really hard when I was putting this list together because there's yeah. like like there's some big hitters on this list, isn't there? Yeah, I agree. Um, and there's people who've got like their own books, so like it's hard. It's, it's hard yeah. then when you've got like side characters to, to fit them in. But yeah. yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about Lysandra. Yeah. Um, I love that she looks after Evangeline, Evangeline yeah. like or whatever her name is. Yeah. Oh, love that. And yeah. like yeah, I I don't mm-hmm. have a lot of bad things to yeah. say. Like. Obviously, like in the first book, you absolutely hate her. She's yeah. like a corpse yeah, 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 yeah. and like yeah, Bit of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 
like you sort of find out her backstory yeah. and like all that stuff with Wesley that she was yeah. in love with him yeah and she's the one who like gives the killing blow to Aravin yes and rightly so yeah. like I know that that's really contested by a lot of people is that it should have been Aileen Aileen gets like I don't think Aileen needed it no. in a way like she needed him to be dead but I think it was like right that it was Lysandra because yeah. like how old is she in the first book she's like barely of age and then Aravin like has kind of based well has groomed her yeah and then decides like I'm gonna be the f- I'm gonna put the highest bid in and I'll be the w- oh I uh, so like ugh. <laughs> like it's such an ick even yeah. though when I see pics of Arabin would I yeah, yeah probably, probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> just think that's just a poor reflection of our moral standards yeah, once again um, but yeah I completely agree with everything you said about Lysandra um, she's my number seven so, oh, okay but yeah um, I, I really really like her but agree there's no Apart from maybe in Assassin's Blade, there's no bad Lysandra. No. Um, I love the like reunion with her uncle, you know, oh. and like that she finds that she has family and yes. she because her biggest concern is always being able to because effectively the day she cut Evangeline's face to stop her from being literally becoming a prostitute yeah. herself, um, mutilates this child so that she doesn't have the same life that she did. But in doing that, effectively has become her mother now, yeah. or her guardian. So she's now like a, a young mum, effectively. Yeah. She's not just trying to save herself, she's looking after like a 10 year old. Um, her whole concern is if they ever survive this, how is she going to provide for her family yeah. effectively? So to find out, and I know she ends up with Aiden and obviously ends up as like a, um, is it a lady? What does Aileen call her? Like Lady of Cav- Cavalry? Yeah. I can't remember the, yeah. the, the thing. But the fact that like before that, she finds out that actually she's from like her uncle's really wealthy yeah. and she'll never want I think he says that like yeah. they'll never want for anything a day in your life all my money is yours yeah he's like a merchant yeah. yeah he's the merchant that um she trades with for the spider silk yes yeah yes um I just love her yeah I lo- it's so, uh, yeah and I that's what it. I love about Throne of Glass oh. something from a sa- something so insignificant in, in Assassin's Literally. Blade like is woven it's like a all tapestry the, yeah, all the, the way through little thing yeah. back here all the way like eight books it. later oh, it's just stunning absolutely love it yeah so your number eight sorry my number eight we can skip my number seven now because it was Lysandra yeah. my number eight is Lydia oh, okay because for me I love Lydia right I love Lydia um, by the end of House of Flame and Shadow here in Room we've said this with the redeeming factors of that book yeah um, it isn't out of a dislike of Lydia by the end. It's purely that we have a whole almost buck and a half of thinking that she's the villain. Yeah. So, like, there just isn't much good side of Lydia that we yeah. see. What we do see, I love it. Mm-hmm. But, like, for a buck and a half, I was convinced she was the biggest twat on the face yeah. of this earth, you know? So, that's the only reason why she kind of rates a bit lower. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any moments I ever read of Lydia where I'm a bit like, ugh, you know? Like, yeah. I think if I thought she was really forgiving to Rune in House of Flame and Shadow, considering we said this, he was a bit childish, to yeah. be honest, at times. Was she was really forgiving. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, that really, all she cared about was her sons. Oh. And like the sacrifice she made to protect them, like, oh, I just, I just loved it. When I read that she had sons, I was like, how the fuck is Sarah going to, like... In book three, how is she going to, like, whip this round? Yeah. And I was really nervous. When I first read it, I was like, mm. oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. But no, it was so well done, so well explained. Um, but, yeah, it's just oh, purely because 50% of Lydia content, she's the villain. Yeah. So it's just hard yeah, no, it it is to, hard. like, get behind her. Mm-hmm. But I don't, it's not out of a dislike. It's just for that reason. Mm-hmm. That, so we've done my number seven. Who is your number seven? My number seven is Morrigan. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, I feel like we're pretty much on the yeah. same page, like, all the way through. Yeah. Um, For all the reasons that you've said, like, yeah. love that she is so close with Reese Cassian yeah. and Az. Like, love that friendship. Um, Love that she's bisexual, yeah. like, queen. We love her. Um, but then there are moments there where are. she's just not very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, love that she's the one that went to rescue Feyre from the spring court. Um, intrigued about her going yes. forward. Like when they say that she has like a house yeah. off somewhere yeah. in the woods and like that's never really explained. So I yeah. hope we get more of like that thread of like, you know, maybe she's got a family. Like, you know, like we don't yeah. know. I need her and Emery to end up together. Yeah, I love that. I um, need it to happen. I love that like fan theory. Yeah. And like, I also want more of um the backstory with Eris yes. because like 
he says like if you knew it's not like, the way yeah. she says it yeah like the way she's telling you the story isn't yeah so yeah. i'm like i'm like well, well i want to know it? then like i hope i hope sarah sees that through as well because mm. i'm very interested to know what what's happened. going on yeah, yeah i agree um one of the other things that just pop- popped into my brain about more sorry similar negative um but i remember is again i know that the dynamic is she her and cassian flirt as like Cassian is this sexual tension buffer yeah. between her and Asriel. Like I understand that's why she deflects it to Cassian because he's a much easier person to banter with yeah. than Asriel. But I'm sure that there's a scene that a lot of people have flagged on Book Talk about this. I think it's Winter Solstice. Maybe it's um, maybe it's Frost and Starlight even. Um, where like she asks Cassian to buy a lingerie for Winter Solstice and like holds it up in front of the room when they're like unwrapping presents oh i can't remember yeah that. and like i'm sure that like there's like a thing where like ness is a bit peed off like you know like a i feel bitch. like yeah like, yeah i know sometimes what she can be a bitch. real fucking bitch like, i just i just don't know that it just gives me a this is another reason why i don't think more's a girl's girl yeah that's a bit of not a girl's girl kind of thing to do because yeah. if you knew that this other per- like there's no doubt that Cassian and Nestor are fucking like there's something going on. Oh with yeah, that like he declares his love for him fucking Akawa. Or like they, people might not know that they're mates, but like they've kissed at that yeah. point. Like everybody knows there's a lot of sexual tension mm-hmm. between them. I don't like that she does that. No, I don't know. I, I just agree. feel like it's no. not a girls' girl thing to do. I agree. My number six is Irene. Okay. Again, we've covered it. Um, I love her, but I think she falls victim just to that. Like, I didn't love that, like, pregnancy trope when it yeah. appeared. Yeah, I did not much more to say about Irene. I've basically said it all. Mm-hmm. She was my number six. My number six is Lydia. Okay. Um, Like, yeah, for all the reasons you've said, like, yeah. we, you know, we think she's the hind. Yeah. And, like, we think that yeah. she's um the yeah. enemy um until we find out like she's part of the rebellion and whatever yeah and like you said like i love that we find out she's got kids and like yeah. that whole explanation of like why she's working for the asteroid like she doesn't want them to get it kids yeah. and ultimately like we love the, the bonus chapter oh we love that word we love it like why wasn't that in the book sarah when i get buried or cremated or whatever you do with me i want to be like cra- like craspin gla- class claspin claspin a printed copy of that chapter <laughs> as I go down because I never when I go into whatever's the fucking other side of this hellhole to the next hellhole I want to go with that chapter because okay. that's how much I love it so just putting it out there yeah that when I go Sammy with that chapter absolutely cool top five top five so my number five I was surprised so she kind of didn't intend... It wasn't like, this is my top five. Whereas with the men, I was like, well, it was yeah. actually my top six, really, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> I, had, I had a little bonus number three. Mm-hmm. But this person I didn't think would be in my top five. She just kind of ended up that way. Okay. Um, my number five is Feyre. My number five is also Feyre. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I really like Feyre, but of all our leading women, she's my least favourite. Yeah. So you mentioned, maybe in the first first podcast that you said something um along the lines of oh it really annoys me when they reference like that she wants to paint that yes and then i was going through different quotes (laughs) were they all and um she like she says something about like cassie and landon yeah and she's like um she can already picture the the how she would paint this and i'm like oh feyre fuck off (laughs) like i get you know in like Akatar, the first book. I mean, I get why Sarah does it because it like brings characterization and humanity to a character. They need to have a thing, right? But you know, by like Akamath, we're so invested in this Sarah that you don't like. We get it. You don't need to sell us on her anymore. It it becomes, you know, what it becomes, Ethan and fucking Sunball. That's what it becomes. But it's like this force, like, and with Ethan, I get. I don't get I didn't like when she did it but I understand because he's a bit of a side character you want to like give him a bit more yeah. this, you don't need to give favour anymore she's the main character she's the high lady of the night court and the whole book is her POV we're not talking throwing a glass for a third person it's it's written through favour's POV like we're on board Sarah yeah. like you don't need to keep telling us how she's going to paint Elaine as like a form <laughs> or whatever she fucking does I don't know like I can't you know I can't listen to it again <laughs> 
there's so many of them. I think the last time when we spoke about it, I actually accurately cr- quoted one, but I can't remember what it is. But no, I'm yeah. sorry, like, I agree with you. It's just um, so annoying. And like, the, the she gets the art studio and she's like oh. in those art classes. <laughs> and then they, they build the river house and like it's, her art is everywhere. Like she's painted herself to put in Reese's office. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, they were giving a rest. They get real sickly obnoxious by Frost and Sarlacc into Silver Flames. The, I, the thing is... Part of me wanted her to die doing that. What for me is Silver Flames? Yeah. Over it, but I still yeah. think I was so fucking over. I think, I think the the switch in POV or the and not just the switch in because it's Frost and Starlight in the third person. I literally can't remember now. Is it in? No, it's from Feyre's point of view, Reese's point of view. We get like different chapters from different. But points then when of it's view. Nessus, it turns into third person, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not. Yeah, because because Silver Flames is technically third person, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. No, I agree with you. And like when they first broach the topic of um the River House, which in what I it's obviously not Akavor, it's Silver, it's Frost and Starlight. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I love this. But yeah, by the fucking end of it and by Silver Flames, like you start, because you're starting that transition into Nesta, yeah. you're like, I'm so fucking sick of this yeah. baby. Like your sisters have literally got PTSD <laughs> from being like <laughs> sexually assaulted in the cauldron and turned into high fit. Like, and you're like fucking living it up in the palace, <laughs> moaning about what colour your rug's going to be, you know? Yeah, I, I totally get that. But uh, I yeah. do, I do love it in, yeah, in, in like the first, Thorns, yeah, yeah, Thorns yeah. And Roses because like, you know, the fact that she's the one that providing for her family, mm. like Nesta's like scowling in the corner, Elaine's doing her garden, yeah. her dad's whittling, yeah. and like, Whit- she, <laughs> whittling, <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm just in the garden, that's what he does, when he said whittling, I was like, oh, but then, yeah, he does, he whittles, because that's what they put on his grave, don't worry. <laughs> She's like the provider. Yeah. For the <laughs> <you make up. laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I was trying to say is that I love that she's the provider for the family. Yeah. Me too. Um, <laughs> there was a really good, um, a really good video again yeah. I saw on TikTok a really long time ago that somebody had like was speaking about how clever and we all know how clever SGM is, obviously, but just how clever she is in that. The way that she builds the like relationship of the three sisters and the fact that Feyre is the youngest because that's so clever that she made that decision because yeah. you know if it was roles reversed because in theory by kind of like personality types Feyre acts like the oldest yeah but you know she was the oldest and from the get you reading the book and you were hearing oh the older sister goes out to hunt for the young ones and yeah they you'd be like yeah. you'd be like well yeah, yeah. Also fucking would. <laughs> but like the fact that she's the youngest and is too old is, is such a like clever yeah. um character choice that she did because it's amazing how like she kind of skews your like thoughts yeah. because purely by the fact of favor being the oldest you would feel so differently yeah. about that like dynamic no, i, totally I was really interested yeah, I, I don't dislike her, but of the leading lady, she isn't my... Yeah, no, I agree. Not my favourite. Okay, number four. Number four. Yeah, mine's Manon. Oh, okay. Um, It was hard because between her and my number three, it was a real, like, yeah. a toss-up. I mm-hmm. struggled a lot with it. I fucking love that woman. Yeah. And I had a lot... Spo- I say a lot spoiled for me, but, like, I had seen on Book Talk and whatever that like Manon was a fan favourite. Yeah. <clears throat> and I knew that when she eventually appeared in Air of Fire, we were in for a treat. Like I yeah. knew how much people loved her. And I really, really love Manon. Yeah. Like I really like Manon. So I didn't know that she was a fan favourite. Obviously like you yeah. when you said to me we've yeah. thrown a glass, you were like, please don't read anything. Please yeah. don't like skip all the TikToks, yeah. blah blah blah. So when 
the fir- I remember the first ever man on chapter. Yeah. I was like, oh, can I skip this? Like, I, I found it so boring, yeah. and I was like, what are they building this girl up for? Like, yeah. what is this gonna be? Yeah. And then, like, by the end, I'm eating my words because, like, I absolutely love Manon. And I was kind of the same, you know, because I knew that she was hyped. So then when she came around and I read the first couple of chapters, I was like, like, what? This is shit. Like, what the fuck? But then, obviously, it changed my tune very quickly. Mm -hmm. What a gem of a character. I mean, in terms of character development, I wouldn't say emotional range, but, like, it's really, I think as a character, the way that Manon experiences emotion is really interesting because she's obviously been brought up to be this like emotionless killer. Yeah. But she does feel yeah. that it's in a really like unique way. Mm-hmm. And like obviously, spoiler warning, when, you know, the 13th, not yield. Um, yeah, yielding. Is it called the yielding? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, but when they blow themselves up the way she deals with that you know and yeah. like the way that she describes like this closeness with her sisters but really she shouldn't have like her grandmother yeah that you shouldn't be so emotional with them yeah They're like your warriors effectively yeah. Um, um yeah my number four is Aelin okay sorry not butting in but one of my Aelin quotes relates to Manon so my number four is Aelin I love Aelin I think she's like a really strong uh, female male character yeah. but one of my quotes um, is just after she fights with Manon mm-hmm. for the first time mm-hmm. and Rowan says why d- why yeah. why did you save her and she says because that golden head witch Asterin she screamed Manon's name the way I screamed yours yes, and I'm it. just like oh that's just what a perfect quote I know. and Wonderful. like the fact that she says to her like you're too good of a fighter to die that way yeah. and saves her yeah. like I'm just like yeah I love that dynamic I love how like they should be enemies but because they have so much mutual respect for each other that they, I yeah, yeah I love that and I love I actually quite like that they don't turn out to be besties you yeah. know I actually quite like that it's like this we're both very prickly characters yeah and like the the sign that she leaves for it like witch killer th- that he's yes. he's still in, in there the about Dorian wonderful. um yeah I love that like oh brilliant I've got a corker of a I've got loads of man on I've quotes. got loads of man on court um, witches did witches didn't need blood to survive but humans didn't need wine either yes such a good one brilliant this is quite a long one but it's a it's a man on being mother hen to a lead um oh I love I love that relationship between them. So basically it's when a lead is captured and these two guards in Morath are like kind of heavy handed her and she's basically naked because she's oh, about yeah, to be the gold. Yeah. yeah. And then it's saying about like they laughed at her being naked, devouring her with their eyes until a hand with glittering iron nails shoved through the throat of one of them puncturing it wholly the guards froze the one at the door whirling at the spray of blood he screamed and his eyes were slashed into ribbons by one hand his throat shrouded by the other both guards collapsed to the ground revealing man on blackbeak standing behind them blood ran down her hands and forearms you're already dead men she's such a fucking badass yeah, she is this is a quote again an alien like quote about mm-hmm. man on here it was again that tug towards man on whose arms buckled as she collapsed to the stone her enemy, her new enemy, who would have killed her if Rowan gave her the chance, a monster incarnate. But perhaps the monsters needed to look out for each other every now and then. Love it. <sighs> love that. Absolutely love it. Love one it. of the, one of my man on quotes um, is like my favorite quote from from the whole series. Her second cousin, her, her second, her cousin, her friend, smiled eyes bright as stars. Live man on live yeah yeah the writing and the relationship between here and the 13th is just yeah. incredible it's amazing yeah i love i love a lot of like how she finds dorian real hot but like doesn't want to admit it yeah. you know like because she definitely isn't somebody who suffers fools no and like she 100 percent sees through dorian's like cockiness yeah but also loki really loves it yeah because don't we all yeah you know absolutely like hello princeling i just love hello that. witch thing hello princeling <clears throat> is just iconic amazing so yeah sorry to go back my number four is Aelin okay um thoroughly enjoy her as a female male character um I obviously didn't know that Selena was Aelin yeah obviously you had that I did yeah I didn't know that so that like whole revelation was amazing yeah and it makes me laugh now when I see people like who have just started talk and they're like I thought this was about someone called Mm Aelin and I'm like haha you wait um and yeah I 
one of the quotes that I wrote down was she was Aiden Ash River Galathinius and she would not be afraid like I love that nod to Sam Cortland yeah. and like I love that love that she had for him and like obviously like all of Tog pretty much follows her yeah. so like it's easy for her to be in the top five yeah. because like we get so much so content much, yeah, and, we we do, get, yeah. and like she is such a badass yeah. and she's so like her plans are so well thought out yeah. even if she doesn't share them with everyone yeah. and everyone's sort of yeah. like playing what catch up yeah, yeah. yeah i just love like how clever she is like yeah. how well thought out everything is um and another one of the quotes that i wrote down was she was fire and light and ash and embers she was alien fireheart and she bowed for no one and nothing save the crown that was hers by blood and survival and triumph and I'm just like, yeah, like for the fact that her mother called her Fireheart, like and Rowan calls her. I know. Well. Oh. So my number three is Aileen. Okay. So we I, have been so we are very this know. whole thing. I agree. Like, there's so much quotable content from Aileen. I could not have gone all like, day. Yeah, but the the they give me goosebumps. Those little segments where she's like, she Aileen of the Wildfire. I don't know what like that. I don't know what it is her being called Aileen of the Wildfire, but it's just like. It's genius. Mm. Like what it what that stirs within you every time they do it, like fire heart, like fire breathing bitch queen. Yeah. Like there's so many variations mm. of it. I I love her. I, and I know we spoke about this and we did our favourite books, but I was really nervous in the beginning because I do think that her is I love her as Selena as we go on. Like when you know she kind of plays Selena when they go back to see yeah. Moff and stuff. I love that. Because I get that like that's her whole thing. She's a bit like this cocky dickhead. Like yeah. I really like that. But in the first book I really was like this person she's a bit of a twat um but obviously the more you get of of alien and selena the the more you love her i love that it's kind of explained the reason why she doesn't tell people her plans basically from throwing a glass house is because she that's effectively what happened with sam yeah and look how it turned out that's why she just internalizes everything there's so many layers to her as a character i love that she's this badass like absolute like you know warrior yeah like but survives endorbia literally literally can kill anyone she's an assassin but i also love that like she loves dresses she loves this I like, love feminine that. i yeah. love that because i think often you only get one or the other yeah um and i love that like she loves chocolates and she loves dancing but she, she also loves music like yeah there's just so much to her as a character it's multifaceted multifaceted they use that way or you yeah. use that with room so yeah she's my number three um, I've got a couple. I have. Ha- I could have put hundreds of alien quotes, but I did rein myself in. I have three. So the first one I have is: I hear hell is particularly nice at this time of year. <laughs> I love it. This is a, for me, I think, and it's a very commonly quoted um, tog quote, but just a banger. Um, this is when she's fighting Maeve, and she says, "There are no gods left to watch. I'm afraid, and there are no gods left to help you now, Aelin Galathinius." Aelin smiled, and Goldrum burned brighter. I am a god. Yes, you like, fucking are, Aelin. The goosebumps Ugh. I get when I read that. Like I just, I love it. And then the last one I have is this is a really random one, but I just thought it was so funny. So Rowan Whitethorn is a legend. This is Aegon talking, and so is his. What do you call them, Cadra? She said glumly. The six of them, age and loosened a breath. We used to tell them stories about. Uh, we used to tell stories about them around the fire, their battles and their exploits and adventures. She sighed through her nose. Please don't ever tell him that. I'll never hear the end of it, and you'll use it in every argument we have. <laughs> I love that. Like she again doesn't suffer fools. No. And although she ends up with Rowan, who's literally like big dick swinging yeah. play warrior, which I love because I think there's such a power yeah. couple together. She couldn't give a fuck about that. Like yeah. that's not why no. she likes him. Like no. I love that she just doesn't care about yeah. people's titles. No, I love that. So my number three is Manon. Yeah. So like literally we yeah, are yeah. like literally back to back. I the reason at Manon just sort of like pipped Aileen for me is I just think she's such a warrior. Yes. Like I, I love that about her. Yeah. Like one of the quotes that I wrote down was whatever doesn't kill me better start running. And I'm like, she's so bad. At, yeah, I know. She's I'm just so like, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I just love her. This is when they say that they want her to produce offspring. Like her grandmother wants her to have children. Yes. Um, because they're going to be powerful witches. Yes. And she says she was a black beak. She was no one's slave, no one's prize horse to breed. And then like, yeah, the the tension with Dorian. And yeah, like I love the, it what colour would you bleed? Yeah. And just like, she don't give a fuck, does no, she? she like, doesn't. you're like a prince and like, she's yeah. just like, I don't care. Like, and when he's spending, I think it's in, 
I think it's in the beginning of Kingdom of Ash when he's spending time with them. You know, they kind of posted in the outpost like near Morath, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, it's before he decides to go back and shapeshift and yeah. infiltrate. And it's where he finds the spider and gets the... Yes. You know, and they, mm -hmm. they're in that like outpost, I don't know what you call it. And they're obviously like banging in the tent on and off. And I'm sure there's at one point a scene where she's like... Just says to him, like, just sleep on the floor. Like, she just makes him sleep on the floor. Like, who would say that to Dorian? Fucking man yeah. on words. Like, no, I, I just... Ugh. I think there's such a, like... That's what I think what's really nice in Throne of Glass, and you maybe don't see it as much in Akatar, is the couples are really interesting. Yeah. Like, in theory, like, Cocky Rowan and Cocky Aelin would, like, butt heads. It's like whereas, two Scorpios. Like, yeah, literally they are two Scorpios. Yeah. But she makes it work so well. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, in a lot of Akatar, it's quite like, like, Reese is the, you know, Faerie's yeah. a bit more quiet. They kind of have that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love about Dorian and Manon. Like, they, on paper, shouldn't get on. Yeah. But she creates this, like, tension between them. I love oh, it. I love it. Yeah, I just, and I just, I just, for me, she's so strong. Yes, And, like, that's why is. I really like Manon. Like, love it. no shit. Okay, so this is going to go to one or two well, ways. Two ways. We either, we either, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're either the same yeah. or we've or gone we're off. we just one off. Yeah, so. So, shall I go to, and then if it's the same. We'll discuss it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Bryce. Bryce. Is that your number yes. two? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, amazing. I, re again, I really struggled with my top two. two. I flip flop yeah. back and forth. Well, so and much. when I was writing quotes down, I was like, going, oh, oh no. Yeah, it might yeah. be Bryce. It, it might, might be. be Bryce. And then I was like, oh no, it's Nessa. No, it's oh, like, yeah. it was like, it was really hard. I agree. I fucking love Bryce like so many people I think especially in House of Flame and Shadow because it was a little bit of iffy moment in yeah. the great buckle round no, bad yeah. time for all of us but I think people like were like where's this cockiness coming from and I'm like have you read the first two books? Yeah, Are we like, reading the same Bryce? She's always been cocky. Always been a queen. Like, we, I think we said this in the first episode, but, like, this is somebody who shot Mika with a fucking gun, and then when they got there, she was hoovering up his remains. Amazing. Like, queen standard content. I think what makes Bryce... Because I find a lot of similarities between Bryce with Aileen. I yeah. think there's a lot yeah, of similarities yeah. between them. Um, what I just think gives Bryce that extra, more like um, relatableness, if that's a word. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a more of a modern day fantasy. Yes. I think that's why we as like similar, yeah. we're and kind of similar age women. I, what I love about Bryce is they don't make her this like stick thin skinny warrior. Yeah. Like, like she's all curves. She's got her fake, queen. she's got her fake, fake nails. nails. She's got her, her pink trainers on. Yeah. Like she's a, she wears a gym leg and she's a messy bitch. She gets drunk. She does drugs. Like, yeah, it's like so much relate. Like I feel like so many women in the like you know eighteen to thirty yeah. kind of can like relate. We've all been a Bryce at some point. Yeah, in our life. she just doesn't give a fuck, does no, she? she like doesn't she give just a fuck. says whatever she wants to say. Like one of my quotes is after um, in the ball when she like announces Hunt as her partner, yeah. and the Autumn King was going to announce yeah, yeah, her, yeah. Cormac, yeah, yeah, with Cormac, and she like d gets in there before mm. him. And he, like, under his breath says, you little bitch. Mm. And she smiles at him and says, it's you little bitch, your highness. I love it. She's like, there's so, yeah, I agree with you. I love all of that about Bryce. I think she's so, because it's, isn't it crazy to think, like, she's a, like, a fae, like, magical mm -hmm. princess. But there's so much relatable about mm -hmm. her. Um, And I completely agree with you. I love how, like quick and funny she is but yes. it doesn't ever feel so forced. like on her feet so like, one of the quotes i have is such a, a a random quote it's actually her when she like goes to meet juniper one day for like i don't know and she just says to juniper hi you're gorgeous i hate you <laughs> because that's such a like thing that you would say to your friend yeah, like, I like, love and it. like yeah she's a good friend as well like like she's obviously like this warrior and like whatever but like she's such a good friend and like yeah. like she facetimes with her mum yeah. and randall and i'm like oh. and do you know what i also love just came into my brain then is like the night that Danica died she feels a lot of or the pack of wolves were killed she feels a lot of guilt because she went out with I think it's with Fury and Juniper she goes out no, with no she goes on that date didn't she and then she texts she... but then she goes to the White Raven yeah yeah day. I can't remember who she, is she on her own she, maybe I she's just know. with Juniper I oh, can't I remember but she obviously gets high and drank yeah. and like she's when they're being killed, she it says she's like shagging some guy oh, in the toilet, yeah. which I know sad, but also like I just love that she's so messy, yeah, like chaotic, like, yeah, like, like she's just like shagging men in toilets, getting high. Like I love when they always talk about her. Like um, there's I think it's in the bonus scene, which I know you haven't read from House of Flame and Shadow, but it's from technically Earth and Blood timeline. Mm. But there's one bit where she because it's just about her and Danica in their apartment before the night it happens. Okay. Honestly, like they get the tattoo. Sorry. 
and she like comes in from work and like throws her bra you know like takes her bra off and it's just so many human things yeah. about her one of my quotes she's just got her nails done and someone's yeah. like did you really take time out of your day to go and get your nails done and it says bryce wiggled her nails at the rebel if i'm going to associate with losers like you i might as well look good doing it i love it i've got a corker one this is literally when i read this scene i remember like i just never loved a scene so much it's her talking to Rue, Flynn and Dak, and I think this is House of Earth and Blood. Um, this is her talking to them. Hey, oh no, sorry, this is um, Sky and Breath. Hey, remember that time you set a dragon free and were dumb enough to think she followed your orders? And then Flynn says, hey, remember that time that you wanted to marry me and wrote Lady Bryce Flynn in all your notebooks? Hunt choked. Bryce countered with, hey, remember when you pestered me for you to hook up with you, but I have something called standards? She's so funny. I fucking love it. I, do you know, right, I wrote this quote down and I do not, I can't for the life of me remember what, like, what mm. the context is. But Bryce says, what's the point of being immortal badasses if we have sagging tits? <laughs> I think it's about her working out. Oh, I think okay, it's about yeah, it, like, yeah in the gym yeah. but I just thought like again like so, so funny. fucking relatable. Yeah, it relatable like like it's the things that girls genuinely do talk about yeah, like 100%. saggy boobs yeah I've got another great one this is her talking to Hunt boyfriend sounds weird for you it's so young but what else is there if he had a star on his chest Hunt you would be glowing as he asked partner not sexy enough lover does that come with a rough and a loot he swept a wing over a bare thigh anyone ever tell you that you're a pain in the arse just ye old lover. <laughs> I bought that Just ye old I lover. Love I love it. Another one that I got that made me laugh is when um, Rune is trying to give her the sword. Mm. And he says, the sword's as much yours as it is mine. Bryce waved a hand at <laughs> I'll take it on weekends and holidays, don't worry. <laughs> and then Hunt added, and it'll get two winter solstices, so double the presents. <laughs> so I just cute. think it's so funny. Yeah, it and like funny. those like little like relatable things yeah. in there that it's like it's not all like action packed, yeah. like it's really like human interactions. They are funny. I've got one more. Um this is Bryce talking to Hunt. I don't know what it is. But she says, your chest is as big as mine, she muttered. That's the least sexy thing anyone has ever said to me. I read that earlier when I was doing my reason as laughing. I love it. Okay, one last one for me yeah, and I'll stop with my good. price quotes. Um, so this is in the the gallery when Mika turns up. Okay. Um, and she, Bryce said smoothly to Mika, I have no idea where the horn is. His smile didn't waver. Try again. Bryce, I have no idea where the horn is, Governor. <laughs> Like she just doesn't so give a funny. fuck. Yeah, she she's like, I'm like, I'm not like, yeah, give it up to you. Like, no. oh, she doesn't give a she fuck. She is just brilliant. Yeah, I she's love her. absolutely brilliant. I Do think like I didn't dislike her in House of Flame and Shadow, but I, I think it wasn't a character thing for Bryce, but I just think plot let them down. Yeah, and it did become. I don't even think that I, I thought, oh, she couldn't have fought pre-planned all of this yeah. i think she could because mm. like this is the same bryce that went and got her nails done at the exact same time that like somebody she yeah. wanted to like overhear talking you know I mean? she is yeah. kind of like that but i just think that like she just yeah. suffered plot in the final book and one more thing about bryce sorry i know i just said no. that but do you know what i love is when um they're all in that meeting watching the town be yes. like raided yes. by the demons from hell and she's running through the square yeah. and Sabine says there's no wolves left wolves left to send oh, there yeah. and the the prime apparent yeah. points and says that that's the wolf oh, that, that's a wolf I just there. Got shivers yeah because like he knows her friendship with Danica yeah. he knows her and yeah. like he associates her as like one of the one of the yeah. pack and I just oh, I and love also that. a huge nod to the fact that we find out that the shift is are fae they're just yeah. a different kind of fae which is really interesting yeah i also final thing i'm gonna see on bryce is i love all of that about her but i love how much of a gentle soul and soft heart she is yeah she like is. and that was one of the things i really didn't love in house of flame and shadow because i can't even remember his flipping name it's not amir the boy sophie resident's little brother that they her parents adopt i can't remember his amiel amiel um i love that like she says like he's just a little boy running around like yeah. she's such she does have such a big heart yeah um but the only thing i didn't love about that in house of flaming shadow is why would bryce take her parents through and put them into prethian yeah where is he keep them safe and leave a meal <laughs> in what in fucking avalon with baxian <laughs> and i understand plot like because 
okay, it couldn't have been like funny ads or humor if there's a child yeah. in Prethian. But that was the only thing I felt like that wouldn't be. She's such a like big heart. Yeah. She would have thought of that. Mm-hmm. You know, that was my only like. You know, well, thing. a quote a quote that I read earlier when I was doing my research has just come to my mind. So it's when um, Ethan leaves her apartment to move in with Rune, uh-huh, Dec, and Fl- uh-huh. uh, Flynn and Declan. I'm sorry at that uh, yeah. point. Yeah. And um, she calls out to him as he's leaving. Sorry for sex island you. <laughs> Instead of exiling, because he's leaving yeah, because she's he's banging, banging all hands the all the time. So she's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Okay, number one. Our number one is Nesta. Lady Death herself. So obviously, when I read Avatar, yeah, I hated Nesta. Yeah, and I think this her being my number one shows the beauty yeah. of good writing and how well sarah wrote that redemption arc for her yeah. because up until probably wings and ruin i hated her i just oh, yeah. thought she was nasty yeah she was like a sniveling little like coward yeah. in the corner who like yeah. couldn't like take responsibility for anything like i just i hated her yeah and by the end of silver flames that redemption arc i think like all of us at some point in our life have, have felt like yeah. a nester yeah. And I've like sort of felt what she's gone through. Yeah. Like and yeah, she just pips the post for me. Absolutely. One hundred percent. I think as well, like like you said, it was exactly my thoughts, is that it shows how much of an incredible writer she is that like she can make you feel one way so strongly towards that character, but it all being completely intentional because you would feel like that if you were Feyre. Yeah. And also I'm not saying Nesta's um attitude is just, but it's and it's realistic yeah. because like there are people that, that that is a very real thing that people do who almost like kind of like what's the, the saying it's like isn't it like cut their nose off to, to spite, spite their, their face? face yeah because she is that person who like doesn't feel like she's worthy of love of mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. but her fight or flight is to just attack yeah and i think like but something we both feel so deeply like we resonate that yeah. so much and I think, like, Sarah kind of, like, speaks about it a little bit in interviews that she said, yeah, there was some personal experience put into Nesta's, like, emotional, mental health, Mm -hmm. like, redemption arc. But I think, you know, it's so raw and real that if you empathise with that, even just a tiny bit, you're like, oh, my gosh. It feels like she's writing you on a... It's like she's gone inside you and written you on a page. At some point in that where I'm like... And I think that's what's so incredible about her character is that she can make you feel that in the space of five bucks yeah basically and like i just i love that she loves to read yeah. i love that she's like always curling up with a book yeah i love that she's so determined like the the yeah uh, however many steps the ten thousand steps yeah. like i love how determined she is i love that she's like no i'm gonna train to be um a valkyrie warrior yeah. like and i'm gonna like commit myself to this like yeah. i just love her determination and yeah. i just yeah, she she really redeems herself 100%. for me, and then like the saving Feyre at the end, like yeah. you know, like changing her body structure yeah. or whatever she did, yeah. like I'm just like it shows that like she's always loved her sisters, like she just had like she some does. internal damage, yeah. like I think as well one of the really clever things again that Sarah did with this is she kind of obviously does eventually become a part of the court of dreams like you know she yeah. just default does mm-hmm. but i love that she doesn't just become like more and amran's besties yeah. because i think at the end of the day it isn't like i just don't think her and morrigan would ever be best no. friends they're just not the type yeah. of personalities i love that she almost like gets her own little extension in emery and gwyn yeah. love that and that's why i, I sh- really want Asriel and Gwyn so hard because wouldn't and then I want Morrigan and Emery because wouldn't that be such yeah. a lovely little like tie off that like oh they all become like one big family yeah you know no, I agree yeah I have so many Nesta quotes yeah same actually they're not that many do you want to go first so <laughs> this is so funny so um this is in from House of Flame of Shadow okay. so it's one of her interactions with Bryce, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so Bryce asks um, Nesta and Asriel, how did you meet? And Nesta says there was a war. And Bryce says, between who? And Asriel says, between an evil fake king and us. And Bryce says, you two are like everyone. And Nesta gives her a withering look. Yes, the king of Highburn declared war on just me and Asriel. <laughs> and I just love that level of like sassiness. She's so funny. I had that like, quote. She's so savage. I love I just it. love that. It's just, I, I remember laughing out loud yeah, yeah. reading it. Like, oh, I just, brilliant. Like, I always think that like, you always think that she's going to be a bit outrageous. Yeah. And then she always says something that you're like. She's just so sarcastic. Yeah, she's so and sarcastic. And I just like, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, 
I think all the Nesters ones I have now are just emotional. Okay. So I have Nestor had loved Cassian since she first laid eyes on him, had loved him even when she did not want to, even when she had been swollen by despair and fear and hatred, had loved him and destroyed herself because she didn't believe she deserved him because he was all that was good and brave and kind and she loved him, she loved him, she loved him. That's the first quote on my list oh. for Nestor. I love that. And, like, I love that she, like, is able to recognise how much she loves him. Because, like, we always see her as this hard character. Yes. Who, like, has no feelings. And, yeah. like, is just, like, a stone wall. And then, like, we read something like that. And it's just, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I've got another one. This is, I think, actually, probably... When I read this quote, although we hadn't quite... It's, it's right at the very beginning of November, Silver Flames. Mm -hmm. We hadn't quite got on the bandwagon of it being a redemption mark. Yeah. But as soon as I read this... The f this is when she goes to um, Windhaven when Cassie is trying to get her to train yeah. but she won't the familiar male's gaze snagged on her what's her business Nesta gave him a secretive smile witchcraft <laughs> she knows yeah. that, like how scared the Illyrians are going to be she doesn't give a fuck and she's yeah. like yeah, I'm a witch one of the quotes that I got which is like a heartfelt one um, is from the moment I met you I wanted you more than reason from the moment oh. I saw you in my house you were all I could think about and it terrified me no one had ever held such power over me and I'm still terrified that if I let myself have you it would be taken away and if you're dead she buried her face in her hands it doesn't matter she whispered I do not deserve you and I never ever will and I just think like all of us at some point have sort of like feel that. and like have like done the self-destructive thing yeah. like how many times do like we start arguments with our partners and because like, like why am i doing yeah, this? yeah and like but like that is nesta like yeah. and like she's so self-destructive and yeah. so like i'll hurt you before you can hurt me yeah. and like i can just empathize with that so, so much hard. She, like, i agree i can just like so get on board with her definitely one of the ones i've got this is just a bit of a lovey-dovey one with her and cassian you could have ruled the world with your power, he said carefully. I don't want to rule the world. Her eyes were unguarded in a way he'd never seen. Mate, she had called him. What do you want, Cassie? And managed to ask, voice rasping. She smiled, and damn if it wasn't the loveliest thing he'd ever seen. You. You've had me from the moment you met me. She tucked a strand of hair behind her ear. I know. Ugh. Because it's so clever that it's so sincere. But at the end of the day, Ka Cassie and Nessa are not Feyre and Reese. Yeah. And like... You're not going to get, like, all this, like, lovey-dovey, you're the stars eternal, yeah. you're the reason why I breathe. I love that she just finished off with, I know. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I love it. Like, tell me something I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Brilliant. <laughs> so this is, um, like, when she decides that she's going to train and, like, you know, do something with herself. And never again, never again would she be weak. Never again would she be at someone's mercy. Never again would she fail. Never again, never again, yes. never again. Sarah loves her repetition. She's like she? a three, doesn't she? Yeah. Um, that's all the quotes that I had. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I want to discuss to kind of go away from the emotional side of it. The woman that fantasizes about having a threesome with Cassian and Asriel is always going to be my number one. Because who hasn't fantasized? Who'd, the fact that she can and told us. Do you know the amount of times in these episodes I say fucking can? I think it's the first time I've said it in this one. But when I was editing the last two episodes, why do I say canon so much? <laughs> but the fact that it's canon that Sarah wrote that threesome and then canned it because it was too steamy. Sarah, we want it. I don't have words to tell no. you what that makes me feel. Because, do you know, like, so this is referencing from Blood and Ash, spoiler alert from Blood and Ash. As much as I enjoyed that, what's it called? The joining? Yeah. In that. And I enjoyed it. It was great. Like, it was it was a great scene. It felt kind of, like, expected by the yeah. end. Like, you knew it was coming mm -hmm. by the end. We knew we were going to get it. It's not that I didn't see. I just never thought that she would put that out there. Yeah. And then she does. And to know that she actually wrote it and then didn't, oh, uh, yeah. Sarah, you're killing me. I know. Also, sorry, no, I did have another quote. But I've chopped a bit off. But it was basically when she's saving Feyre when she's giving birth and she's about to die. And the first part of this was saying that Rhys dropped to his knees. And it basically says that he would do that for no one or anyone but Feyre and his crown. It's the whole thing with yeah. his tattoos on his knees. But he does it for Nesta. And then it says Nesta dropped to the carpet, lifted Rhys's face in her hands, steady what lay in it. Then she threw her arms around the high lord of the night court and held him tightly. Which I, like, I... And, like, we... It, like, it's no secret that they hate each other. Hate each other so, like, know. that scene is just beautiful. And I do think that our beloved Reese is a bit mean. Especially in House and Flame and Shadow. 
there was a few instances where I was like, use a ring your neck in race. Yeah. Like, but, and then there were a few instances where you could see her biting her tongue, but I definitely think she's doing that now because she's, you know, like married to Cassia. Yeah. She probably knows that, like, she needs to play, not play ball, but, like, keep her nest and us to herself. Yeah. Do yeah. you know what I loved as well, sorry, um, about nest? I don't have the quote for this, the, like, specific quote. But it's, like, when um, she says, like, I want a big wedding. Like I want, I want yes. like all the fanfare. Yeah. And Cassie's like really, and she pulls a stale biscuit out of her pocket. Yeah. And she's like, all oh, this. Yeah. One or the other. Like I have to feed you, don't I? Yeah. And he's like, so it's either like a big fancy wedding or a stale biscuit. Yeah. I just, yeah. I love that, and I, I love that she wanted that. Yeah. Because she's the last this, person you'd expect it I from know. that would want like a big ceremony. I know. Like and they and the, do. I hate that we got robbed of that once again. Why didn't we get it, Sarah? Even as a bonus, I know. It I know we a, we know. say about the Lydia and Rune, like it shouldn't have been a bonus. At chapter. least we got it though. Yeah. yeah. Like how. How did that never get written? I know. I want to see that mating ceremony between Asriel yeah. and uh, Asriel between Cassie and Nesta. If Asriel wants to get involved, yeah, no, I know. I love her. I think I agree with you. Like what we said right at the beginning, it, it just proves her um, quality level of writing. Yeah. She can make you feel that about a character. And again, a lot of people. I think as many people who love Nesta as many people don't love Nesta. Yeah. But I think it kind of goes back to what we said about Reese is that I love that she is again Ness is morally great yeah. she's not a good whereas I feel like you know Aileen like at her core and Bryce deep down they're good people you yeah. know they always do the right thing and Ness does not do the right thing yeah but she's not as like cut, cut and dry as the yeah. others are and I love that about her yeah and I, and I think that's why you can sort of find references with yeah. her because like the other two are so good they sort of like setting the standard too high yeah. and you're a bit like oh god i'm i'm not yeah. a good person I'm not that good of a, yeah. like yeah like because like we all do like things that yeah. we think maybe aren't like the best and we yeah. so like i think with nesta it's so easy yes. to relate to her yes. because like yeah she's not a good, good person yeah. and she's not trying to pretend she is either yeah. i agree i agree yeah. so yeah no I, I that was really funny that, that we were so i know i did wonder like because you know with our sjm men we were very similar, but then there were some real curveballs, yeah. i.e. like Asriel, you big, do you know, top five, yeah. but kind of memory was on me, but not very high. Yeah. I did start to think, or oh, maybe there's going to be some big hitters yeah. that are going to be down there. Mm-hmm. But um, we were literally like nearly leveled pegging all the I way know, through. I yeah, know. I think we, with our, well, I suppose we both picked Reese as well, didn't we? But, yeah. Um, because I think we're very similar. Yes. We we obviously have a lot more connection with the same characters then, mm-hmm. I think. And it's funny because both of our favourite books are Mist and Fury. But which isn't which isn't a Nesta book. Yeah, it's that's what book. I was going to say. Yeah. That like, then like Silver Flames, com- like Nesta comes out on top then. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I suppose it's just the, the beauty of the writing. It is. That you can like be so yeah. invested in so many different people. Yeah, and we both like, not that we rated Feyre low, because she was both, was she number five for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that she was our lowest rated yeah. main Mm-hmm. main female character out of all of them um, but again it doesn't mean I dislike Feyre it's just yeah. there's just she's just not our like kind of gal yeah is the way to put it I think yeah I'm not very creative maybe I'm jealous of her painting skills <laughs> if she has any yeah who knows <laughs> right are we all done we are we are that, that was, was all good. 15 of our 15 SJM men yeah women are we lucky <laughs> oh, women <laughs> well, Thanks so much for listening. Join us next week for a new episode. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at a pod of Smut and Wings fan. What?